Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to paint another one of my favorite flowers. I'm all about flowers lately with springtime uh, on the way. So I did an iris, a bearded purple bearded iris. I'll leave a link below if you guys have missed that one. You can check that one out. And I've also painted some roses and lily of the valley. So my next painting, as you can see from looking at the thumbnail, is fuchsia. So there are so many different variations of fuchsias and different colors, but the one that I chose today is my classic favorite, typical fuchsia colored fuchsia with um, some beautiful purple tones in it. And what I'm gonna do is just talk quickly about the canvas, the brushes, and go over the colors that we're using today. And then we're just gonna jump right in and get started with this one. So hit subscribe and let's get started. Okay, first of all, I've got an 11 by 14 stretched and primed canvas. I've also got the following colors that we're gonna need. Um, you can use other ones that are similar to this. If you don't have these exact same brushes, don't worry, just pop some uh, questions in the comments section below of anything you need an alternative for if you don't have these brushes and you're really not sure what to use. And to start, I've got a number 12 angle brush. So I always tell people if you don't have one of these, they're really great brushes. I do recommend getting one of these. So you could just take a regular uh, flat brush like this and then just cut it on an angle. You'll need a really, really sharp uh, pair of shearing scissors to get a nice clean cut. And the next brush, so that was a number 12 angle brush. The next brush I'm gonna be using to paint my flower petals is a filbert brush. This is a number 12. You can use one smaller or larger if you like. You're also gonna need a liner brush. So this is a zero, but you could use uh, one smaller or bigger as well. This is for the small little lines and details for the bottom of the fuchsia and also the little stem. And to start the background, I'm gonna be using this one and a half inch flat brush just for patching in, blocking in, color and light and shadow with my yellow, green and black. Okay, the colors we're gonna be using today are neon red, neon pink, lemon yellow, pale green, titanium white, Mars black and phthalo blue. Of course, this is what I'm using today, but you can use any other uh, variations of these colors, okay? It'll change and alter your painting slightly from mine, but that's okay. I want yours to be your very own. You don't have to try and copy mine exactly, okay? And the colors you use may even end up looking prettier than what I've chosen today. I'm gonna show you guys the brands I'm using as well, just because uh, I get that asked a lot, uh, different brands that I use. So for my phthalo blue today, I'm using Grumbacher Academy. My neon pink and neon red are both by Holbein. So it's actually called Luminous Red and Luminous Opera. And these come in a nice uh, set along with warm and cool yellow and uh, neon purple violet as well. For my green, I'm using Pale Green by Arteza. And I've got Cadmium Yellow Light Hue from Liquitex Basics Acrylic. So it's a more of a cool yellow, lemon yellow, anything similar to this is going to be just fine. And if you don't have a cool yellow, just go ahead and use whatever yellow you have. And the black that I'm using is just by Folk Art. And actually, I don't even know if this is a Mars black. Any black will work if you have lamp black. I mean, any black is fine. We're just trying to make darker tones and shadows for this painting. And the white. I get a big tub of this, the Liquitex Basics Acrylic. It's always a great deal at Michael's. Uh, it's where I find most of my paint, except for the Holbein. The Holbein neon paints are not sold at Michael's. I really wish that they would, um, but I've been getting those on Amazon. Okay, so I'm gonna start by getting my canvas a little bit wet. I just use a little bit of water to slick my canvas with. So this helps to spread the paint around a lot easier. And I also talk about this a lot. I've been mentioning it in a lot of my tutorials lately because it is really helping you guys, right? Acrylic is can dry out fast and be a little bit hard to spread, especially if you're using the heavy bodied acrylics like I am. 
So a little bit of water will go a long way and really extend your paint. But keep in mind, if you're gonna use too much water, you're gonna thin your paint out and it's gonna be transparent and very dull looking, which can be handy and useful at times, but not for um, everything. So you'll have to just kind of practice and get a good feel for how much water works for you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a little bit of this pale green and I'm gonna start blocking in where I want my brightest green to be. And then I'll come and layer over with some black. So of course, this is just a blurry background. I love that kind of out of focus look. And then one part of the painting is in full focus. And of course, for this painting, it's gonna be that beautiful fuchsia. I like doing a crisscross for backgrounds, especially with lots of leaves and brush and foliage because it gives you more of that layered look. Like layered leaves and bushes and all that stuff. So just by applying it like this, you already are starting to get a feel of all of that taking shape, all those leaves. Okay, I'm gonna go into my black now. Along with the black, I'm gonna pick up more of my green. And I'm just gonna start crisscrossing. Applying the paint the same way. I know black is, when you're using black, don't use uh, too, too much of it. I like to tint it with another color because it does dry really dark and I don't want this. I want it to be more of a rich hunter green. Uh, it's just more exciting, right? Having a dark, dark green than just uh, plain black. So keep that in mind. Your acrylics dry darker. So you don't necessarily need to use all black to create the darkest parts of your painting. I'm going to come right in here and just make a leaf shape. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it just like that for now. The next thing I'm going to do is make this look even more blurry. See all these little lines from my brush? What I'm gonna do is soften those and give it more of an airbrush look and just get rid of all those little lines by taking one of my really soft one inch mop brushes. I'm not gonna get my brush wet because the paint is wet and I just want to very lightly, look at that, see, instantly. Little circles. Now the trick is to catch it while the paint, right after you apply the paint and it's still a little bit wet. That's why it comes in handy, wetting your canvas first with a bit of water. And of course there are uh, slow drying mediums and gels that you can add to your acrylics to make them really slow down. But I found in the past that doesn't work well for me because then it takes, it does the opposite. It takes forever for them to dry. And if I wanted, to paint like that, I would choose oil paint. So uh, for me, just a little bit of water works, but you can experiment. A lot of acrylic artists enjoy using the slow dry medium. So it's just my opinion if you wanted to know why and if I use them or not. So I am gonna use my uh, angle brush for my leaves. I want them to, I can come and use this brush and come out and then in and I can make a nice fine. Once my brush is wet, it'll make more of a fine point to my leaves. Um, and you can achieve that if you've got a really good, especially brand new filbert brush. But over time, filbert brushes start to get a little, little bit um, uh, frayed on the ends of them and it might be a little bit harder. So if you're a beginner, I would try to use something really flat like this um, and uh, it'll be easier for you. So it's just a little tip. Okay, so I'm going to start my leaves now, and I'm definitely going to have one right here. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of my paint.
pale green. There's a little bit of black in there. I'm gonna take a little bit of white and not overly mix, because I always like to have a little bit of uh, light and dark mixed as I apply the paint, because I think it just kind of looks a little bit more realistic and it's just more fun that way. So I'm gonna come out, go in and then pull off. And I'm just gonna start going from the center. See, when you don't over blend, you get those little lines. You can also start from the outside and gently pull in like that. So whatever works for you. Okay, then I'm gonna just gently cut into the black and the green. And I'm just gonna very lightly go down the center towards the end or the tip of the brush or the <laughs> with the, the tip of my brush towards the end of the leaf, the tip of the leaf. <laughs> you guys know what I mean. Okay, so what I want to do is come in on the edge here and see how my brush is kind of spreading apart. I want to use that so that I get a little bit more of a texture to the end edges of the leaf because they kind of they're not completely smooth. And then I'll just clean it up a little bit by pulling in towards the center of, of the leaf. So as the paint starts to dry, it's going to dry darker and I'll be adding a little bit more uh, white and making this sort of a muted minty color. Now to add a few more lines for the pattern of this leaf, I'm gonna use my uh, little liner brush. I'm gonna get it wet and I'm gonna take my black and my pale green again. It's really important to have some water in your brush. And I'm just gonna start pulling out little lines like this. We're gonna create a little bit of depth, a little bit of depth in the center of this leaf where it kind of goes in just a little bit and the other parts of the leaf stick out. So those parts that stick out have more of a highlight. They're gonna be brighter. And then of course, where it kind of goes in, shadows fall, it'll look darker. Remember to let off for, let off pressure to make 
skinnier lines. Okay, I'm just going to take more green now, a little bit of a water drop on there. And I'm going to come around these shadow areas and around them and slightly over top. You can definitely add the green over top of that darker color. It's still going to look dark once it dries. I just want to saturate this a little bit more. Okay, and then a little bit of the white. So the end of the leaves don't actually come into a really, really fine point. I mean, you can keep yours in a fine point if you want, but there's this little scoop, rounded point. I'm going to take a little bit more of the black, a little bit more green. And I'm going to switch back over to my angle brush again and start the next leaf. Now that one's going to have the most detail. So I'm going to take a little bit of white, my green and my black not over blend and have one where I push gently wiggle and press and then let off okay, and then I'm going to take a little bit more white make it a little bit rough like that a little shaky And then one that just, we're just seeing more of like the edge of it. So you want to think about different angles in your uh, landscapes, florals, whatever, um, outdoor plant, leaf, bush, anything you're painting, there's different angles, right? Unless you're painting something that's just face on and the leaves are face on, but um, they're gonna have different angles and you have to um, just kind of get out of that comfort zone and go for it because it's really gonna be a game changer in your paintings. It's gonna give it so much more depth and make it more interesting. So I'm going to pull from here, come down like this. It bends over, making it look kind of flat right here, slightly flat, a little bit of a roundness to it. And we'll just add a few little lines like this. Doesn't have to be perfect. The focal point is going to be our uh, fuchsia. So we'll just do a few more. And I'm just going to wet my brush a little bit and rinse out the excess paint. And I'm just going to very lightly back and forth or up and down release some of that paint so it looks a little bit more blurry. So 
just want to make sure I get a bit more of a clean edge though. Take a little bit of that bright yellow now. I just think that's so pretty. And we'll add some of that. I'm come right in here and apply a little bit of this over top. Not over blending. Those dark lines and little shadows and highlights are still going to show up. Add a little bit. A few leaves in here. come right up and over this one a bit more of a layered a little bit of layering here Take a little bit of water. Some more of that yellow. Some white right into the yellow green mixture. Go ahead and add a blurryish leaf back here. I'm going to cut in with a little bit of black and green. just to make that stand out a little bit more. And then just add a few lines. Rinse my brush out. Go back into my white, yellow, green. Remember, I'm trying to make this one look a little bit more blurry. So we'll take a little bit of white and just bring that over. I want this one to be on top. Some more green here, a little bit of white. Mix the two 
and I'm just gonna add some more bright areas in the background. a little bit more generous with the green. Take a bit of that white in there as well. Not over blend. I want that to be kind of blurry. Now as this starts to dry, I can come in and add more layers. Brighten it up. I'm going to add some more background greens here, a little bit more see-through so it looks a little bit more layered and try to break up any pattern, kind of overlap. Okay, so for the next step, I'm going to add a few of the stems in the background, then I'll dry this off, and then I'll come in with the flowers. So I'm going to use, for this, I'm still going to use my angle brush, and I'm going to take some of my red, uh, green, and a little bit of black along with that white. I'm not going to overblend. I want just this kind of uh, brownish color with little hints of red in it. And I'll add a little stem like this. It goes in and around. And then there's, you just kind of want it to look like it's layered, right? So You'll have it go behind, like in front of some of the leaves and behind some of them. Then I'm going to take a bit of white and just cut into those colors again. Gently pick a few areas just to pull and add a highlight. Mix up a little bit more of the red. And then I'll take some more red with black on the very tip of my brush. And within these little stems, there's little thicker sections that look like uh, little ovals not perfect ovals, so don't worry about trying to make perfect shapes. Now, when I'm using colors, I like to play up on complementary colors, and the opposite color of red is green. Of course, we're using a lot of uh, these bright uh, pink and pinks and reds here. So with my shadows here, maybe it's really blurry and maybe there's some fuchsias that are in shadow in the background. So I'm thinking about that and I think maybe I'll take a little bit of red and that pink and a thin layer. This is going to dry darker. Just add some 
little sections here. I'm even going to take a tiny bit of my phthalo blue and mix that in to get a soft purple color. Now I could be a little bit more generous. Remember the black is gonna really make this dry darker. So what you're seeing it looks like right now, it's gonna be darker than that. And I might even go back at the very end and add some more. Let's just take a little bit more of my blue and overlap that. Just give us some uh, more of a cool, deeper, cool green for shadows. So these little, all these little extra things that you do, are gonna give your painting that wow factor make it pop make it look exciting and it also makes it a lot more satisfying to paint okay i'm just going to use my liner brush and add stem coming down here and i'm going to use that black uh, red and green again A little bit more black. It's nice and dark. And I'll just have it coming from somewhere up there. Okay, and then I'm going to take a little bit of red and pink and just very lightly go inside a little bit of white even if there's a little bit of green on there that's fine now it's probably fine how it is but I think that I just made it a little bit too wide so if that happens to you just take your flat brush or angle brush like this and push and pull off to make it narrower and then I'm just going to make this kind of fuzzy up here I'm going to use a little bit of that white And after bringing it down here, I'm going to go ahead and just take this off, or you can just paint over it. The paint will cover it up anyways, but that doesn't need to be there. Okay, I've got my number 12 filbert brush. And I'm going to start by taking a little bit of white with my pink. And a little bit of red a little bit of white pink and red don't want to over blend I'm going to start by adding a little line about half an inch and then pull and curve Pull, press lightly and curve. I'm gonna make it just a little bit wider. I'm 
Look how that color just pops. I'm going to come right down here. And add a rounded line. I'm going to add a little bit of white to the top of it and just pull gently inside. And then I'll come inside that petal. Okay, I'm going to continue along. We've got one that comes right here, pointy, and then push, pull, and then come in, kind of twist over. And there's a little bit of a highlight right here. They almost have like a satiny look to parts of them, don't they? So that gives them a shine and that's when it's important to add a bit of white in there. Okay, and then right here, I'm going to add a little line on an angle. just a little bit of water on my brush load those colors up again twist pull up so it almost looks like a triangle here okay and then we're going to bring it up into a point We've got the one back here, and it starts about here to here. Gently pull out, then start to curve and up, twist over into a point like that. Just, just lightly going to come down here and add the leftover paint. And I'm going to take a little bit of my red, a bit of blue. And add some shadow under here. So we're just going to come from the bottom, pull and flick up. Again, that's phthalo blue and the neon red I'm using. Come inside this one right here on the top part. Lightly pull where it goes in. We're going to get a bit of shadow right there. So we're just thinking about adding our shadows. I want this to stand out more. And it's going to be a little bit darker on the outside. So I'm just going to go around, kind of outline it. Again, come up and over with that one. Down here is where we're going to have our the rest of our flower that's a bit darker in that beautiful bluey purple color. So I really like using uh, the filbert brush for 
flower petals, especially when they're round like this. So you can just gently apply the tip and then where it gets a little bit rounded and fuller, you can push Take a little bit of white in there too. So right under here, we've got another one. It comes out and layers over that one. Like that. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Look at that, isn't that a pretty color? Start another one over here. Pull a little bit more pink into it. And then there's one around the edge, around the side there. A little bit of light pink highlight in there. It'll dry a little bit darker, but slightly lighter there. And then One right in here, in between those. And then a few little scoops with more blue and pink right underneath. Okay, I'm gonna come up here and add a little bit more color now. Gently just take some of that off. Okay, I'm gonna take my pink and my red a little bit of both. Go across the top, right over that shadow, it'll dry darker. And then a little bit of white right on the top there. Anywhere we want these little highlights to be. Mix those up again with a little bit more white this time. Go 
I'm going to pull this one down here, really blow up my brush up, and just pull a little line down like that, and then pull and fan. Okay, I'm going to go over to my liner brush now, and I'm going to make a really dark shadow color, blue, a little bit of pink, and black. And I'm going to go in between the petals. Just going to make the petals stand out a little bit more. So it kind of looks like a little triangle right in here. I'm going to use more blue for this the edge here and just very little pressure. And wherever I have those little scoops, I'm going to scoop a little bit more, adding a bit of that dark shadow color. I'm going to continue to use this liner brush and mix up some more red, pink, and white. So get a little bit, a little more, a little bit more saturated. There we go. I'm just going to add a little bit of light right in here. carefully on the tip right there. And right across, just a skinny little line right across the top there. And then I'm going to pull and twist a little bit more red on there. twist right there. And I'm going to come in, need a little bit of water. That'll help. Helps the paint flow a little bit better. Be a bit more generous now with my pink. Now I'm having fun using uh, a lot of paint. I like to use a lot of paint, but you definitely don't have to use as much as I'm using here. I 
I never used to use this much um, paint when I first started painting. In fact, I used to use those little craft, just the little craft uh, paints, the thinner paints. I'm going to go over to my uh, Rake Wisp fan brush. This is optional. You don't, and a lot of you guys probably don't have a brush like this. And if you're curious, you can get them at just about at any art store as well as online. What I like to use this brush for is creating neat fan shapes. And we've got, of course, these spaces cut out purposely, right? So that really helps to get more of an um, uh, even shape. So I'm going to get it wet. And I'm going to go into that pink, white, red mixture and I'm going to pull, pull and swirl. What I'm going to do is go back with my liner brush, pink, blue, and just make this really thin. Use some water. I'm just going to outline this line. Because it's dark on either side of it. Thin that out. I just kind of want this muted reddish purple color. There we go. I'm going to add another little thing up here, part of this where the petal grows from. So I'm going to be using the green, black, and red first. And I've got quite a bit of paint there on my brush. Let's take some of that off. And we're going to add another little narrow oval here. And with a little bit of white, mix that up. And add a few little rounded lines from the top. And I'll take my light pink, white again and maybe just a little bit more white this time and then I'll come in with a little bit more of the black and then just right inside here make it a little bit darker So I'm going to make it a little bit longer so I can easily go back. Uh, a little bit more white.
and then just soften. Okay, now we're going to come down here and do uh, four to six lines. And I'm just going to mix up some black with my pink. And we're going to add them from right here. Uh, one that comes down right here, slightly on an angle like that. I'm going to go and adjust this, get rid of that curve. It was a little bit too scoopy. So I'll take that off with my angle brush. Those are handy brushes. And then I'm going to add some shorter ones here. And then one that's a little bit longer. Then we're going to have some pink, a little bit of white, add a little ball like that, and then just like a whole bunch in here. I take a little bit more white inside this one, very little pressure. More red and pink. Still got a little bit of those dark colors in there too, and I like that because I can just have very gentle pulling into the other colors with that, and then it just picks all those colors up and gently blends in. Make one a little bit, a couple a little bit longer here. So see how easily you can just go right over. Okay, so what I want to do is go back over to my number 12 uh, filbert brush. I'm going to take pink, white, and my phthalo. I'm going to go along just the edges like this with the petal. And gently pull. Gives it a little, little extra pop of color. Then to my neon pink. Take that neon pink. down below here. It'll dry darker, but we're going to tinge that. When it dries, it'll be like a, a dark pinky red color. Okay, now I think it would be nice to have some uh, little buds that haven't opened up yet. And I'm going to take the same colors, pink, red, and white. Oh, there's a little bit of 
that purple that stuck in there, which is fine. So I'll have a little, little oval there and then push gently. And we'll come into a little point at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to add red and pink along the edge and down towards the bottom. And a little shadow, a little darker area right inside here as well as on the side not pushing too hard it's being very very light I'm going to add the little stems um, after Okay, now I'm going to come in just with white first. Add a little bit of white on the top there for a highlight. And then I'm going to overlap my next bud right here. And my pink. More of the pink right around the edge here. And I'm going to switch over to my liner brush now. And let's see, some black and some green some red that little oval on top of those ovals right there then a little bit of white dab that on the top bit more white on the next oval now that brownish color that we just made I'm gonna be using that along with a little bit more of the red and right in here got that color for what of a shadow down here a little bit of water on my brush to help loosen that paint out and I'm gonna very lightly outline I'm gonna add a little bit more some more shadow on that one behind it We'll add a few lines. A little bit more water. That should be nice and loose like this.
And then I'm going to take a little bit of white. A little bit of white on the very, very tip of the bottom of the bud. I'm going to go in between those lines with white. And then I'll take a little bit of red, black, green mixture. And add our little stems. It's going to have a little bit more red in it. Make sure it dries a little bit brighter by adding a little bit of white in there. And then I'll take a little bit of black, a little bit of green. Make it kind of blurry. Then I'm going to come in with a little bit of white and pale green again with my angle brush. Brighten that up. So you can really carefully get in between. See how just during the course of this painting and this video, things have dried darker. Okay, I'm going to take my red and pink. Just going to outline. Add a little bit more color. And a little bit more shadow, so a little bit of that red and black, pink, red and black. And then just a little bit of that pink with a white. round that out just a little bit make it less of an oval I'm going to come in down here again and make uh, I've got extra paint and I kind of feel like I want to have it look a little bit uh, like there's some more flowers down there so I'm going to make it look blurry see even just a little something like that I'm just mimicking the one that I'm seeing up here less effort
Let me get a little bit more pink on my brush. And I'm just gonna make it look kind of ruffly. And then maybe some more little buds here. So just painting it all the same way. I'm just doing it a little bit quicker and a little bit more carefree now. Maybe just one right here too. And then just really light indications of some stems. I think I'll add a little bit of a little bit of blue over this. Fade it out a little bit. nice for a shadow. Okay, I've also got to add that little brown, greenish blob right there. So I'm going to go ahead and just go back to my liner brush. I'm going to scoop up the remaining little bit of red that I have. Add some of that, and it's all blending in. It's all it's picking up all those other colors. bit more white to make this look like it's popping out a little bit more. Now you can go right back over to your filbert brush for this step as well. A 
just adding that little bit of white indication of maybe some more back in here mimicking those little ends I'm going to take a little bit more of my white and my green. And I'll add another leaf in here. a little bit more of the white so it shows up. A little bit of water. And the final touch will be a line in light pink right under here. Just so we can see where that petal ends. And then just shadow. So a little bit of that pink, black, maybe even a little bit of blue. And as I add the finishing touches to this painting, I'm just going to turn my brush this way and kind of drag it lightly over like that to help create a pattern. As I finish adding the touches to this painting, the final touches, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. This was really relaxing to work on and I hope that you guys um, want to paint along and that you enjoyed this one. Have a wonderful day and happy painting. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye.